Hi folks, I'd like to welcome you to uh, this morning's webinar, which is about starting a new screenplay. Now, I, I ran a kind of test webinar last week. Uh, at that point, I was holding up bits of paper with my various headings written on it. We've got a presentation, which hopefully you should be able to see, I think. Um, I can, can, I, can people see that? Hopefully, yeah, fantastic. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Right. Um, so we've got a presentation as we as we go through. I think you should be able to actually hop between. Uh, if you, if you can see it as screen in screen, you should be able to highlight one or the other. If you'd rather see either me talking or the slides, um, but also it's worth sticking around right the way to the end of this because uh, I'm going to be doing an extra one today. We're going to be doing this webinar about starting to write a screenplay, and the second bonus webinar that we'll be doing at one o'clock which will be about whatever wins the poll that's currently on Twitter. Uh, if you go to my Twitter feed, which is at Zcars theme on Twitter, there's a poll regarding what the subject of the one o'clock webinar will be. Um, so get involved on that, and uh, hopefully <laughs> you'll um, be able to influence what the, the subject for one o'clock will be. Uh, excellent, seems like people can see uh, both the, the presentation and me, so that's good. Um, Right, well, well, we'll kick off. I just want to briefly kind of explain who I am, because I think that kind of helps at this point. Um, I'm predominantly a screenwriter. I've got eight main screenwriting credits on released feature films, mainly horror. Horror is really kind of what I specialize in. Um, I've sold spec scripts on both sides of the Atlantic, so spec scripts being scripts that you've written without them actually having a home to go to. Uh, if, if you've never heard the term before, if you were to start writing a screenplay as soon as you finish watching this webinar, and hopefully you do, that would be a spec script. You would be writing it without it already having a, a production house attached to it with the idea of going on to, to sell it later. Um, I've sold spec scripts both in the UK and in the US, um, which is, is trickier to do now than, uh, than it used to be, but I've got some experience with that. I've also done quite a lot of work as a script doctor, so taking scripts that have been optioned uh, by producers, and then if for one reason or another the draft that they've optioned isn't quite working for them, um, then I kind of work on the rewrites for that. And, and again, I've done that on both sides of the Atlantic as well, so I've done that for the UK and the US. Um, I've got also I've been talking about screenwriting for a very long time as well. I've been talking about screenwriting and filmmaking for about 10 years. Um, so hopefully that means in terms of these webinars and in terms of I'm gonna try and start offering like one-to-one -one coaching sessions that can be done through this expertise site. That that's kind of the, one of the end games. I want to put together some courses, I want to put together webinars uh, and do one-to-one -one co uh, coaching regarding screenwriting, because hopefully with the mixture of actually doing industry stuff for 10 years and actually lecturing about it for 10 years as well, I'm in that sweet spot of knowing the realities of it, but being able to explain it, um, hopefully, in, in a, not exactly an academic way, um, but in a way that people can kind of get to grips with. That's kind of what the plan is anyway. So uh, that's kind of who I am. Uh, I think it's worth kind of just mentioning who, who I'm expecting you are. <laughs> I'm only assuming two things. I'm assuming that you're interested in writing screenplays, and I'm assuming that you're prepared to put in enough effort to get good at it. If you're only doing it absolutely for your own entertainment, the effort bit, I guess, isn't quite so important. Um, in terms of if you're doing it to get your material out there in order to make sales or to get features made from your screenplays, it's really important to get good at it. There's an awful lot of people actually who have very good ideas um, and can get those ideas on paper and have, but don't take the time to hone and refine it to a point where it's a sellable product uh, and those people aren't gonna get their screenplays made. So all I'm assuming is that you're interested in doing this and that your end goal is actually to kind of get it sold or viable out in the marketplace. So the, court, the majority of today's webinar, as I say, is gonna be assuming that you're at the first day where you're gonna sit down and you're gonna start writing your screenplay, which hopefully will be uh, a fantastic career-changing move for you. Um, this works as a kind of checklist in terms of making sure that you're starting from a good place. Uh, and that's really what I'll be talking about today. Now, 
on my on the uh, first of these slides here, I suggest that you mark out 30 days on your calendar and protect them. I'm not saying that you're going to be able to complete a screenplay in 30 days. I don't think that's, although it's a challenge and it can be done, and I have done it. But, but the 30 days, the blocking out the 30 days, I think is enough to commit you to a project. I think if you kind of set out and go, um, oh, I'll, I'll do a little bit of this as and when I can, I don't think that's enough of a commitment to get you across the line where you've done that kind of point of no return, where you've, you've dedicated so much time and effort into it that that in itself is an incentive to continue. I recommend block booking 30 days. I think actually get one of those little disposable uh, disposable colours, I guess anything printed on paper is disposable, but if you get a calendar, um, Pound World, uh, The Works, any of those, they'll set you up. Go and get one of those little calendars and actually find 30 days. It doesn't matter if, if those 30 days aren't all together, which they probably won't be, if they're scattered throughout even three months, whatever they are, if you can ring fence 30 days, and that's not an entire working day, it's not whatever, but somewhere where you'll be able to get at least two or three hours of work in and then protect them. Guard those 30 days with your life because you've got them in your calendar, man, and you're going to stick to them. So. If you can get those 30 days uh, ring fenced in your calendar and know these are working days, I think that's a little bit of the battle won already. If you know that you're going to devote this time to your screenplay and then you follow through on that, I think straight away your screenplay is immediately going to become a significant enough uh, piece of work that you will work on making it good. Um, I spoke a little bit and I did like a test webinar last week, which I know a couple of people saw. Um, and I talked a little bit there about options for screenwriting software. Now, um, I've phrased that in this checklist as pick your weapon of choice and stick to it. Now, it might be Keltex or Writer Duet, both of which are free platforms where you can do your formatting online, or it might be Final Draft. Final Draft is a paid platform, although there is a free trial period, I think, still on it. Um, so you can have a kind of go with that and see how you get on with it. But um, but the important thing is to find which one works for you. I'd try them all out. Why not? Um, try them all out and just kind of go, yeah, okay, that's... Caltex, unfortunately, have started watermarking, um, saying produced by Caltex, whatever, which might not be ideal if you're going to be sending this out to studios. Certainly the free version of Caltex watermarks, once you start paying for it, it doesn't. Um, Writer Duet doesn't watermark, I don't think, at the moment. But anyway, try them out. Pick your weapon of choice and stick to it. Um, I also think, as well as ring fencing those 30 days, you need to work out what workflow works for you in order to actually get the best amount of progress. For some people, that's longhand. It is grabbing that, uh, when you pick up the diary from Pound World or the works, go and get a little notebook as well and see whether longhand works for you. Some people just like the act of brain dumping in terms of longhand, writing out ideas, writing out rough versions of scenes. If that works for you, fine. Um, it's a good way of getting the ideas out of your head and onto paper, and then you'll have to factor in the fact that you then need to translate that onto your screenwriting platform, onto Caltech or whatever it is. Um, but for some people, longhand's a real godsend. Um, I'm a big believer in dictation and transcription. I've got two ways of doing that. Uh, one is that if I have a rough idea that, again, I want to get out of my head and get into words, I will actually just activate the um, transcription function on just on Google on my phone, on Google Docs. If you hit the little microphone and then talk into it, it pops that into words on the screen. One of the things that works for me for is that it cuts you off if you stop talking. So it kind of forces you to keep talking. If you're just trying to explore an idea and get that idea out of your head, uh, doing that kind of transcription uh, on Google Docs, just hitting that record and talking forces you to keep talking and therefore it generates words on paper. Now those words on paper are not going to be formatted in a screenplay format. They are not going to be perfectly, uh, it, there will be some mistakes in there and it won't even be um, anything approaching something you'd let somebody else read. But it's a great idea, way of getting the ideas out of your head and onto a device or onto something. That's one of my transcription methods. The other one is to use the voice recorder on my phone. Uh, so it records to MP3. I'll just leave that, I'll, I'll do this sometimes when I'm driving. I'll leave it on the passenger seat, 
uh, and I'll just talk. I'll get the ideas out of my head and I'll record a long MP3 um, onto my phone and I'll then upload that to a transcription website. The one I've been using is otter.ai, which is free. I know it's got some paid things on it, but the basic package on it is free. And so that will then transcribe everything I've said on my car journey uh, into a Word document. So again, if you're looking at getting ideas out of your head, one of the things that I love about that is it means that it makes live time out of dead time. People think of a commute as being dead time. Um, it, all you can do is passively kind of drive along. If when you finished it, you've written 3,000 words, however bad those 3,000 words are, however rough those 3,000 words are, that's a hell of an achievement for a commute. So I really like using transcription software. That's one of the things that I really, really go for, and they're my two main methods. Um, it's also worth working out whether you work better with a workflow that is linear or non-linear. What I mean by that is do you want to start your screenplay at the beginning with your opening image, go right the way through it, write the whole thing out, every time you sit down you're just writing another little bit and finish at the end? Or would you rather break your screenplay down into 40 scenes that must happen, we'll talk about those in a little bit, and then write each one as the mood takes you. Um, I used to write, when I was, um, when I many, many years ago, when I was a much younger man, uh, I used to write prose, I used to write novels and stuff, and I used to have a real problem killing characters. I would f fall a little bit in love with my characters, which I kind of think you have to do. You have to care about them. If you don't care about your characters, how the hell do you expect your audience to? But I used to write, a, uh, I used to really care about my characters an awful lot, and I used to have a huge problem killing them, even if I knew that I had to kill them as part of the narrative. So what I used to do was I used to save up those scenes where someone had to die, and I wouldn't write them. If I was feeling happy or if I was feeling romantic or I was feeling whatever, I would write a scene that corresponded with that mood. And then one day I'd come home in a foul mood and I'd write five death scenes, one after the other, bang, 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 bang. I'd kill all the characters when I was in the mood to just kill people. So, so the linear or the non-linear, either let the story dictate what you're writing or let you dictate what you're writing. If you can break your movie down into a, a series of 40 scenes, you can let your mood dictate what you write. And I think that that, for some people, works so much better. If they know, all right, I've got to write an argument. If they've just had an argument with someone, they go, right, I'm doing my argument scene, and it's, this is what I should have said. And suddenly, it all flows beautifully. Whereas if you're feeling quite chilled and calm on a, a, a Thursday evening sometime, you go, I don't want to write an argument scene. So linear or non-linear writing, these uh, are tricks that can help you. Find a workspace and own it, even if that workspace is your car. Um, if you've got an office within your home, if you're lucky enough to have like a, a room where you can sit and work, Again, like the 30 days in your calendar, protect it, fence it off and make sure that's yours. You need to own that workspace and you need to be able to say, no, I'm shutting everything else out and this is mine. Um, so yeah, that's a kind of quick organizational checklist. I wanna move on to uh, talking about what things I think you should brainstorm before you ever type the first words of your screenplay. First one of these is your genre. Now, um, I'm very much a, a genre guy. I'm very much thought of as being a, uh, a horror writer, and uh, I'm happy with that. I was once advised that uh, I'm, <laughs> so I'm quite senior in the industry, that I'm in a little box, but I shouldn't try and escape my little box. I should learn to love it. And my little box says horror on it. So I'm happy. I know that when I sit down to write something, it's gonna be loosely within that genre. For, for you, maybe if you're just starting out, you have no such constrictions in terms of professional expectations, but work out what genre works best for you and that you can potentially sell within the marketplace. I think the next thing that you need to identify um, before you tap those first keystrokes is what your central conflict is about. Everything is driven by conflict. Every character interaction, every big idea, every small idea, the only reason people watch stuff is because of conflict and you need to work out what that conflict is. Whether the the conflict in your in your story is internal, whether it's one person's war against themselves, whether it's an external conflict, whether it's you know uh, marines versus uh, giant space bugs, whatever that central conflict is, that that central idea, you need to get that down. In term, uh, once you've worked out your genre, once you've worked out what that central conflict that's gonna drive your story is, I think you should work out 
a rough sketch of who your central character is and how they relate to that conflict. They need to be tied into it either by being uh, complicit in the conflict or trying to escape from the conflict or whatever it is. Your central character needs to be linked to the conflict that lies at the heart of your story. Uh, similarly, you need to do the same thing with your antagonist, your bad guy. Um, even if your uh, even if your antagonist isn't uh, isn't a person, for you know a movie like Jaws that obviously has an antagonist that's an animal. However, the uh, the central conflict of uh, of Jaws, whether you look at that as being uh, land versus ocean or whether you look at it as being uh, commerce versus safety, or, or whatever you see the central conflict of Jaws um, as, that shark is still linked to that central theme of the movie, and I think that's very, very uh, important. Now, when we've, we talk about character development, and I mentioned this idea again briefly last week, we come back to this idea of your, your central character having a lie that they believe that is going to get disproved in the course of the narrative. Um, if your character believes, in the case of when Harry met Sally, um, it, it, the character of Harry uh, believes that men and women can't be friends uh, because sex always gets in the way, and that is the the lie. Well, whether that is disproved in when Harry met Sally is open to debate because obviously the sex changes the nature of their relationship. However, the idea that men and women can't be close is certainly a driving character of uh, a driving force in that character of Harry, of when Harry met Sally, and that is what is questioned, interrogated, and ultimately disproved in the course of the narrative. Every main character will be driven by uh, what they want and what they need. Every main character will also usually have a lie that they believe that will be disproved in the course of the narrative. If you can work out what it is, then that gives you the first building blocks for your character's journey. And I think that's a great thing to tick off the list when you're starting. Um, whatever the main theme of your film is, I try and distill that into a line of dialogue and just have someone flat out say it. Have someone say it fairly early on in your narrative. You know, there's a reason why every damn Spider-Man movie ever made has with great power comes great responsibility spoken as a line of dialogue. It's because it's the main concern of every one of those films. Every, every Spider-Man movie on some level is examining whether with great power comes great responsibility. Um, and so, so as a result of that, they include that line in nearly every Spider-Man movie. That the, when Harry met Sally, the can men and women be friends or does sex always get in the way? Put it as a line of dialogue. Uh, the Hobbit, uh, I mean, Lord of the Rings, with uh, even the smallest of people can make a difference in the world, which I think, uh, certainly in the case of Fellowship of the Ring, is the central theme of that one. Uh, it's a line of dialogue. So work out what your theme is, what the main concern um, that you will be examining during the course of your narrative is. Put it as a line of dialogue. Scribble it down somewhere, because you'll be including it uh, within the opening act of your screenplay, once your screenplay's up and running. So, where are we? Uh, yeah, I mentioned the idea of breaking things down in a non-linear fashion and writing things up um, as scenes. When you kick off your screenplay, I think that one of the best things you can do is work out what the hell those scenes are. A hundred minutes or, or so of screenplay is quite a lot of time. Um, and I think that sometimes people have a premise, uh, but they don't actually ever really work out how that premise is going to fill 100 minutes or so of screen time. Now, one of the techniques that I've come across along the way, and I really like this one, is the idea of actually breaking down though that uh, 100 minutes or so of screen time into 40 scenes, and then breaking those scenes down into the three acts, and then having a sticky note, uh, to represent each one of those scenes. It forces you to face up to whether these scenes deserve to exist. Every So you get your, your deck of 40 sticky notes, 10, pile of 10, or 10 across a wall. Oh, it's great, you can get them across a wall, it looks fantastic. Cover the whole damn wall with sticky notes. There's your first act, there's your second act, there's your third act. Suddenly the whole thing feels real. Um, so uh, yeah, if your first, your first 10 sticky notes, 
uh, will deal with your first act. So they deal with your setup. They deal with introducing the audience to the world that you've built. They deal with introducing them to your lead character. Uh, they deal with introducing them to the first event that's going to kick your story off, which is something called the catalyst or the call to adventure, uh, how the character reacts to that. All of these kind of things in 10 scenes. So if you start scribbling out 10 post-it notes, of, all right, my first scene is going to be my lead character in one environment. My second scene is going to be my lead character in another environment. I think during that setup, it's really important to see your protagonist in different environments as well. I think that really helps. Um, and then it, you, you get the bulk of your uh, narrative, your second act, which as we mentioned uh, in the, the test one. I've got to stop referring to the test one. I know very few people saw it, uh, but I don't like to repeat myself either. Uh, I've got hours and hours of, of this stuff that I'd love to tell you guys about. So hopefully we'll kind of get around that. But anyway, second act is twice as long. So you get, uh, if you were to think of it as a pie chart, your first act would be a quarter of it, your second act would be half, and your third act would be a quarter of it. So in terms of our post-it notes, sorry, sticky notes, uh, you know, copyright and whatnot. So in terms of our sticky notes, we've got 10 for our first act, 20 for our second act, and 10 for our third act. So that's basically our beginning, our middle, and end, which when we talk about three-act structure, let's face it, that's really what we're talking about. 10 for our beginning, 20 for our middle, 10 for our end. And if you can scribble onto each one of those sticky notes, what is happening in the scene, where the scene takes place, uh, and why the scene should exist, that's a really good start before you start putting uh, keystrokes down in terms of what's actually gonna happen within those scenes. So uh, 40 sticky notes, absolutely. Once you've got them filled in, I think we're way on the way to having a coherent, uh, structure for our story and we haven't even started typing it yet so this is a day well spent um, okay things to remember this is only the beginning even if you're there with that checklist done um, you know what who your protagonist is you know who your what your central conflict is you know how your 40 scenes are gonna play out and uh, what genre you're gonna be working with and all that great stuff um, it's only the very very beginning and even once you take that jumping off point and you actually write that first draft, remember that the first draft doesn't count. Uh, it sometimes gets called draft zero, dump draft, vomit draft, something like that. It, I think sometimes when people think of that first random draft as being the first draft, it limits their ideas of how much better it could possibly be. Um, the first draft doesn't count. It's a perfect representation of your screenplay at its absolute worst. Whatever your skill level is, you could be fantastic. You could have an incredible natural skill and a natural talent at screenwriting and whatever you have produced as that first draft is the worst thing you can possibly do. It's brilliant that it exists. It's a fantastic thing, so we don't resent it, but it's always important to remember that it is not in any way, shape or form representative of the work that you can do. And sometimes um, I, f I feel that for people starting out in screenwriting, uh, they feel, well, I've written it. I've written it. No, you really haven't. And I think the idea that a first draft is having written it, you need to let that one go. All the first draft has to do is exist. It's an entry into a much deeper, longer process of getting that as good as it can possibly be. Um, which brings me to my little pep talk, which is to say that uh, there is loads of competition out there. Everybody's aware of the fact that there is loads of competition and we can beat all of them. You, anybody listening to this uh, webinar, you can beat all of them. Um, I, you know, I had no, <laughs> I kind of self-taught, I suppose is the, the thing. Um, and, you know, I read a lot of books, read a lot of screenplays, all of that sort of thing, but I never had a, I never had formal training in terms of screenwriting stuff until I ended up training myself and then I ended up being the person delivering screenwriting uh, training but I persevered and I just got as good as I possibly could as I went along I'm under no illusions uh, that you know I there are many 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 people out there spectacularly better than I am at this and I believe that over the years I'll get better continually because it's an ongoing process but out of all the thousands and thousands of people who want to be screenwriters, 
loads of them drop out all the time. There will have been people who will have dipped into this webinar, seen two minutes of it, and left. And they thought, oh, I might watch that later, and they never do. Great, we've lost them. We've ditched another bit of the competition. If the people, you know, they don't stick it out through 30 minutes of someone talking about screenwriting because they don't prioritize it highly enough, and they drop out and they go. So that's great. That's one more person who said that they wanted to be a screenwriter who is never going to be one. And that's fantastic. And that happens all the way along. Out of um, the people who make it to the end of that, that dump draft, that vomit draft, that first thing, and the ones who then go, well, I've written it, and now it's done we can forget about them as well. Those guys are never going to go forward and become screenwriters. It's just a matter of really hanging on to the horse once you're on it and watching everybody else fall away. Um, and hopefully, if, you're, if you've listened that, that this far, um, that's something you're interested in doing. And I'm interested in helping you in any way I can um, to kind of get through that. Um, We'll be doing some more uh, of these webinars about different sorts of subjects. If the subjects that people are interested in, if the stuff that uh, you'd like to hear me talk about or whatever, please do sign up to the uh, expertise.tv community. I'll try and get some downloads, some PDFs and things like that, uh, cheat sheets. In fact, I'll send one out from, uh, from this webinar. So if you go to, I did, an, I did a short version of the URL. If you go to bit.com, uh, ly so bit.ly forward slash pat higgins that will take you through to the community thing i'm going to put a pdf that's got a, a version of the points that i've made in uh in this presentation uh i'm going to send that out to the community you can also follow me on twitter uh at zcars theme so uh it, yeah zcars theme i really should have picked a better twitter handle i never realized it I, you know you saw, i said that to twitter like 10 years ago never really realized it was going to follow me around i know you can change it but i never have so yeah, follow me on Twitter. And here's the cool thing as well. Um, I'm going to do another one of these at uh, one o'clock, um, which is going to be on whatever subject wins the poll that is currently on uh, Twitter. So if you go to my Twitter handle, uh, 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 twitter.com forward slash theme or at theme, you'll find on there there's a poll. There's four different questions. There's four different options, uh, which are currently... Let's have a look how we're doing. Okay, um, I offered the options of screenwriting for horror, the ending of a script, movie idea generation, or why not to give up. Um, at the moment, we're on 40% for the ending of a script. So unless something changes dramatically, uh, I'm going to go and um, <laughs> we will be doing a webinar regarding uh, how the script ends. Um, but yeah, if you really passionately want something different, head over to Twitter. Uh, and get that swapped over. So um, I'm going to wrap this up now, but thank you ever so much for listening. As I say, join onto the community and um, uh, join onto the community, make your voice heard, and uh, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, as I say, I'll get the PDF up there so that you can download it from there, and thank you all very much for listening to it. Cheers. Bye-bye.